then in rich, British passages, passages. So for this system, basically is this, we are given a system mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx uh, equal to f of t. Okay, so right now f of t is such a, so this is the t square. Repeated. And the time is uh, 36, right? So this is period equal to three seconds. Okay, so that is a such a loading um, information. So for this case, I want to demonstrate uh, the basically the form I want to demonstrate here is called the magnitude spectrum. So that is the purpose of demonstrating this example here. Okay, and. I'm going to explain to you what is that means. Uh, before we go into the explain what is this, uh, let us first uh, uh, solve the system response to such um, uh, uh, loading. Okay. So for this loading, FT, uh, let me uh, here we can find the Fourier series expressions for the FT, and let me rewrite that one here. Oh, that is three. That's four over pi and times n equal to one to infinity. Okay, so that is a transform. So basically that, once we expand it, that combined the harmonic uh, functions of cosine and sine. Okay, and then we know the magnitude for each harmonic terms is such that, okay, n, one over n squared pi, or one over n, whatever. As long as we have such combination, decompositions, then response of this system should be simply, again, repeat, So again, this is our system, okay, and as long as we get the Fourier series expansions, the basic the input is a combination of so many terms. An input is a combination of so many harmonic terms, and including constant, including cosine, and including sine. Okay, again, repeat the process in a way you determine the magnitude for each harmonic term. You determine the R value based upon the working frequency of that term divided by omega n. So you repeat these kind of things and in the programs, and such that you take the summation, and that gives us the total response. Okay, so basically here, let me skip the details of the calculations. And assuming our programs, our calculation is correct, then based upon that one, let me explain what is the magnitude spectrum here. Okay, 
Um, so you still remember this transfer functions, right? So this is the system response exactly. So we have FT. So this is our system uh, described in terms of the transfer functions. And that is 1 m s squared plus c s plus k. Right, so that is description of the system in terms of transfer functions. And if you know that one, even we replace s by, say, omega, so that means we describe our systems in specific in the frequency domain. So once we replace such, uh, we do this such a replacement, then we say that is called the frequency transfer function. So that means become m uh, times j omega squared plus c. Okay, so under this case, maybe you can write one more block, but let me double can work down here. Okay, so that becomes like this. K okay, minus m omega squared plus j c omega. Right, so that is what we said is frequency transfer functions. So under these situations, then you know the um, um, let me let me let me draw another block. So given this system's transfer functions, then these transfer functions can be further des described by the magnitude and a phase angle, right? Because this is a complex numbers. Complex numbers, if you remember, say this is, uh, say, 4 plus uh, J3. So if we have a complex number here, so this complex number can be expressed by 5. So this magnitude is 5, and the phase angle is uh, 53 degrees. So we can also express by this notation, right? Got it? So this complex number is 3 plus J. So this is the imaginary, and this is the real part. So complex number for this one, either you express in terms of the real part plus imagined part. You can also express in terms of the magnitude and phase angle. And that's what we did here. And that's what we practice here, OK? So basically, this is the m omega and phase angle. OK. So under these situations in my lab, you can use this command, body. How exactly use it, I forgot. But check it out for help. You can use this command to plot to plot the n omega and phi omega. the end, the magnitude and phase angle in the frequency domain. For example, the magnitude will be something like this for second order systems. Okay. Good. And the phase angle could be something like this. I just kind of systematically drawing that one. Good. So as long as we have a specific value for M, K, and C, and we manipulate the calculations, then we have the graphical representation of the system, something like this one. Bear this in mind. For specific, for any combination of M, C, and K, we have a corresponding curve. Okay, and with this in mind, so this, graph, this graphic showing is, for example, I consider M equal to one kilogram, C equal to two, and then I simply change the parameter for k 
k equal to 10 newton per meter compared to 50 newton per meter compared to 200 uh, newton per meters. That is a corresponding system curve magnitude. This is a magnitude, okay? And they plot on the same uh, scale of the omega from 0 to 30, from 0 to 30, from 0 to 30. From here, you can clearly see that when the system's uh, parameter change, their response change. For this case, if you remember this curve, this curve actually representing is what we call the displacement transmissibility, or what we call the magnification factors. If you still remember these kind of special terms, and the peak representing corresponding pretty much is the natural frequencies. Okay? So for this case, natural frequency is smaller because the K is smaller. Makes sense. And when K becomes big, then natural frequencies become big. Okay. So that's a system dynamic, that is a system uh, behavior. Okay. And now the following graph is such that in our steady state response, and we can find is the magnitude. Uh, let me call this the first term, and let me call the the remaining is the entrance here. So let me say the x steady state response for the first term that will be equal to three divided by spring constant, and divided by say that is the one minus r square plus two zeta r square, and then you simply plug uh, r equal to zero and etc. Repeating the same calculation. And plus, the, for the second term, for cosine. So that would be equal to 1n squared divided by pi divided by k, like the magnitude, again, and 1 minus r squared, I try to do something uh, here. OK, so that is a cosine, 2m pi divided by 3t and minus phi. And say, let me say the t, uh, uh, tc, OK? So here they are equal to, 2m pi 3 and divided by omega n, right? So this is the working frequency. This is the our working frequency here and put into there. And then whatever the phi c, and let me ignore that one. And you can repeat the same calculation for sine. Okay, so here for sine is, you can look up here. For sine is a, for sine term, it has a magnitude, so let me write it up here. The magnitude is minus one divided by n. If you multiply this one in, the magnitude of the sine term is minus one multiply one over n, right? And this one divided by k. And the same thing, uh, the same information calculation on the magnitude here. Okay. Once you have done this one, you simply plot. You simply plot the magnitude. This term here, we calculate the magnitude of corresponding harmonic term. If you plot this magnitude against its working frequency, again, this is a frequency. If you plot corresponding magnitude at a specific frequency, here we come to you, I come to the definition, uh, explanation of what is a magnitude spectrum. Those plots representing is called the magnitude spectrum which is a plot, listen this carefully, which is a plot of the magnitude corresponding to whatever the frequency it is. So for example, if say this magnitude equal to one, corresponding to working frequency at one, so that corresponding is in this dot here, okay? Because working frequency for this example is discrete. Discrete, that means from two, pi 3 over 3, and then 4 pi 3, and then uh, uh, 6 pi over 3, etc., etc. So in this way, for this case, the magnitude spectrum is expressed in terms of the discrete point. Be good? In homework 10, I use that word. I, I again, I describe the, I give the definition again, what is the magnitude spectrum. That is the meaning of this one. Okay, so we're back to our problem here. So once we have the different parameters of the system for the system, for example, when k equal to 10, 
So for k equal to 10, you down the all the calculation, you make a plot of the magnitude spectrum, you have this curve. You have such an expression. For the different numbers of k and repeat the whole thing, you make the plot have this one. And for this case, you have this one. Can you see, before uh, I do a little more explanation, can you see any correlations between system response to system behavior? You see, those points, high point, pretty much follow the kind of the systems, the peak. Okay, so that means from this point onward is this. Because the system behavior, let me explain <coughs> that. Because the system has these, uh, the magnitude m omega, something like this one. This one working as a filter. System working as a filter to filter whatever the signal input here. For this signal, that is a constant. For this signal, that is in terms of cosine omega, say uh, for the first time is say 2m pi divided by 3. So that has a magnitude like this, okay? So for system here, I talk about is about the system dynamics. The system's behavior, basically the system by itself is working as a filter to demagnify or magnify the system input. The, if the input, if the input has the frequency, if the input signal is falling into the, the such a peak, uh, let's we'll say bandwidth, okay? If you remember the bandwidth, so this is the bandwidth. Uh, bandwidth. If the input or the, the force excitations is such that given in the bandwidth of the system, then that component will be magnified here. If the input have a frequency that is outside the bandwidth, then the system response will be expressed, will be expressed, will be suppressed. Okay, so that is explained by this, by this curve here. So here you can see the bandwidth for this system is about this range. So whatever the input that have the frequency corresponding falling into the uh, the bandwidth here, then that magnitude representing the system response is simply magnified. Okay, so that explains the magnitude spectrum. And um, in the homework exercise, I encourage you to build up such a curve. So in that homework, I ask you to review the things again, determine the system's pathways, R1, the boundary R1 and R2. I ask you to calculate it. And then I ask you as a self-exercise to see whether you can plot this kind of curve as a system's magnitude versus omega. And also I ask you, once you have a calculation like this one, I ask you to plot the magnitude spectrum something like this as a self-exercise, okay, because there's no way for me to do this rating of such drawing on blackboard. But once the solution is posted and you will see how the things been doing there. Okay. Uh, the concept basically here is the magnitude spectrum uh, is the important concept here. And to get that one, you can see that involve uh, quite a bit um, the calculation at first. Okay, without the calculation, you wouldn't be able to achieve this one. Um, there's a more detailed discussion about this in our textbook uh, about this, uh, the earthquake, the recording, the things. Okay, that one, I, you can read, um, but on the textbook. Any questions?